With over 500,000 trees and shrubs already planted and growing, it's easy to forget you are in the city. We don't just say, we do. It's the Stain City Way. Welcome to Real Talk right here on SABC3, where the stage is yours. So we have us a special show today. We all know that most siblings decide to leave their sporting competition on the school playing field, right? Most, but not all. Throughout the history of professional sports, we've seen some pretty outstanding set of siblings playing alongside each other and even against each other. Venus and Serena Williams, Michael and Ralph Schumacher, Rory and Tony Underwood, Andy and Jamie Murray, but never in the history of sport has there been twins playing international rugby. And we had them on home soil representing our national side. Akona and Odon Dungane, inspired by their father, who played club rugby in Mtata, grew up knowing they too could achieve something using their talent. Between the two of them, listen to this, they've had 20 appearances on the national team, a World Cup medal, more than 200 Super Rugby appearances, more than 300 Carry Cup caps to date, and played more than 500 first-class matches at all levels. But what makes them special is that they are really, they, I don't know, maybe it's a farce, eh? but they're just, they just nice people. They're just humble and down to earth. But for a bit of nostalgia, we'll start with the firstborn, Akona, doing the most on the field. Wait, I just need to rectify something. You're not from East London, you're from Umtata. Yes. Correct. Okay, no, I'm checking because, you know, I've got a register of my hometown. Because <laughs> I'm also from Umtata, so when they said the man from East London, I'm like, mm mm. Yes. Mm -mm, but mm -mm. You, you could say we're from both because we've spent enough time in both towns. So I think both towns will say we are from East London and Umtata. But where were you born? Yes, born in Amtata. I can then it settles it. <laughs> Don't cause any more fights, okay? You know how Amtata people ever like. Okay, let, let's just say we are Eastern Cape boys. Fine. So, apparently, you are five seconds older. Five minutes. Five minutes? Yes. I know, because when they said five seconds, I was like, how good are these doctors? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I think, um, you know, when I, when I asked my mother, you know, what's the age difference? Yeah. You know, and then she says, uh, she said five minutes. Mm. You know, because I think I've heard people say it's five seconds. No. Which doesn't make sense. No. So, no yeah. it's, it's, it's impossible, right? I had to push him out. He was so lazy. Uh, <laughs> you so were like, brother. When, when I came out, I was out of breath. You know, I was so tired. <laughs> and my mother always says, I'm always the, I was the sickly one growing up, but I think it was all the energy that I wasted. <laughs> trying to... Trying to get this man out. Trying to get him out. So who behaves older? Because I know with twins, there's always one who's got a a more authoritative stance on life. Is what it do you? you think? I think it's you. Why do you say that? Because he just said he had to push you out of the womb. What do you say? I well, I'll, I'll give it to him, you know, because <laughs> as the older one, you have to let the younger one enjoy the moment. Uh -huh. you know? So I'll say, you know, he's the one that has the more mm. 
um, authority, like you said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I get that. It's, it's that light lamiki thing, wanting to, you know, get the place yes. in the world. Yes, no, he wants no, to get no. the shine, so I'm going to give it to him. You know. Yeah, it's fine. So, my mother didn't want us even playing the same sport, right? She was like, you go do swimming, you go do hockey, you go do netball. I don't want you guys playing the same sport. How does it work out that, you know, not only do you guys end up playing the same sport, uh, Audra, but even the same position? Yes. How, did you, how does that work out? I think we've always kind of enjoyed the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, before we even took rugby on, we used to play soccer. Yes. You know, we used to imagine ourselves as the young Dr. Kumalos and, uh, you know, all Tebu those... Kumaloi. Tebu Kumaloi, all those older players. Mm. And I think the rugby obviously came, as you mentioned, from the dead. Yes. You know, so my dad was very passionate about the sport. And not only us uh, played rugby, al also our two brothers also played rugby. So it was a family thing. You know, the whole family enjoyed it. And uh, how many brothers do you have? Because I know you eight kids. Yes, so there's uh, three other brothers. Okay, so there's five of you. That's almost enough for a Super 7 team. <laughs> <laughs> you do realize? Uh, we could put our own blitz pocket. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I don't know about my older brother. His uh, is, is physique wouldn't fit into the, the blitz pocket. Are you calling your brother fat? No, I didn't. I was just saying. Because you've seen the blitz pockets, how they look like. Yeah. Yeah. You, you also used to play center, but now, if you look at him nowadays... He's a center. <laughs> I'm joking. So when, when, when would you say you realize, you know, we're really good at this and we could actually make some money from this? I think we, after high school, mm. um, after we kind of saw that, you know, the unions were interested in signing us, um. you know, because my mother and my dad were pushing us to study, you know, of, like any other parent would yes. say, okay, Go finish your diploma, go finish your degree, and then you can focus on the sport. Mm. But I think um, once we saw that, okay, sport was taking, you know, the front seat, mm. um, I think then we kind of said, okay, well, let's give it a go and see how far we can take it. And, mm. you know, I think we've been blessed to take it all the way. I don't Were even think it was about... Sorry? I don't even think it was about the money initially. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. at school we were just too lazy. <coughs> to and do what? <laughs> to, to carry on studying. Okay. I think we were both enjoyed sport. Uh -huh. And we obviously went through high school and we didn't want to continue. Mm. But having the parents that we had, you know, they said, you're going to go to university mm -hmm. or technical, you know, because sport is not a career. It wasn't seen as a career back in those days, mm -hmm. you know. So, but uh, as he said, we did study, and uh, but our passion took over mm. eventually because something that you love that much will eventually take over whatever is whatever other things mm. you're trying to do so for your parents because obviously their worry is you need to be able to and this is why the education things were yes, stressed yes, yes. you need to be able to take care of yourselves they want you to be able to pay your funeral policy you know they want yes. you to be able to <laughs> yes yeah, <laughs> exactly. you know exactly. uh, so when did they then realize yeah. oh wow oh wow yes. we're okay here well, I think uh, because, like I said, we did finish high school and then we en went on to study. Mm. And then we must have done, I think, about two years. Yeah. And then now the contract started coming because oh. we weren't contracted before. We were just playing in the age groups. Mm. And then the coaches would say, I want to sign you for two years, and which meant now the demand became more. Uh -huh. So then for us, we didn't complain, you know, that's what we wanted to do. You just said you your bank details. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, it wasn't a lot of money then, but uh, uh, I think they then realized that we actually loved what yeah. we're doing. And I think the biggest thing for us was uh, the support they gave us mm. uh, was massive, mm. I think. If it wasn't for our parents, we wouldn't have gone as far as we did. Mm. When else did you guys wear the same outfit? Like at the same time, because you know twins, they match you, match you. Yeah. When did you stop it? Yo, I Austin. think we were very young. Very What's very young? Thirteen, five? eighteen? No, no. Wait, no. go back. Yeah, Nine, go down a bit. Seven. I can't, can't even remember. Do I you ever get the urge? No, no. Not at all. I'm actually, I'm very much against that. Really? I think now that I'm older, yeah. you know, because back then when I was a kid, my mother used to dress us, yeah. so you, we didn't have a choice. Mm. But now. You know, even though we have a similar style, but uh, I like to... You mean to similar hairstyle? <laughs> <laughs> I, I yeah. think also 
uh, to be quite honest, when we were growing up, we weren't the best of mates. We used to fight a lot. Ah. You know, we used to fight about everything, about this anything. This is mine, this is my space, this is my you side know? of the room. So I think the time when we could make our own decision about what you want to wear, that's when it's like... I want to look nothing like him. Yeah, yes. you okay. know, I think obviously the older we got, then we, we understood, you know what, we actually got closer. All right, so let's go to this. The brothers currently hold the distinguished record of being the only twins who have ever represented the Springboks, although never at the same time and only played together for a brief spell early in their professional careers. But most interesting is when they played against each other. We will chat more about their professional rugby careers after this. When bulls and sharks' wings, Akona and Odon Dingane earned their 100th Super Rugby caps, it was a personal triumph as much as it was a triumph for transformation in rugby and, of course, the Eastern Cape region. The magnitude of this achievement has never gone unnoticed. The brothers have both retired from professional rugby, but what they do, what, what they do say about their illustrious career is that they absolutely enjoyed it. We're hanging out with the first Bog Twins, and here is Odwa's time on the field. Yeah. I try to tell you. Yeah. Why. And Ngani picks it up. And Ngani, what a try. Caught the mapping. Oh, it's unbelievable. Age beast, but now I'm free. How can you blame me? I was born for this. The game tells me. And Ngani should race away. Yeah. Hot word. and they have won the Freedom Cup. Winners over the All Blacks three times, and in doing so, they retain their status as the number one team in world rugby right now. So, um, twins always tell us that, you know, if you spill hot water on your hand, he'll feel it. Are you guys that type of twins? Um, I think so, but I'm a bit confused now. Uh -huh. Because... Uh, we used to get uh, fever blisters the same time. Oh. <laughs> but I see he's got one. And, and you don't. Yeah. So, so I don't know if it's the Deben weather or no, the water it's there. it's still coming. Or... Yeah, I was about to say, any minute now. Yeah. <laughs> just just wait for now. it. <laughs> no, no, I'm okay. I'm okay. But then in terms of injury, I mean, if you then got injured on the rugby field, could you feel it? Nah. No. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I, uh, no, I'd I be lying if I it. say, yeah. Uh, no. And have you, have you guys ever stood in for each other when the one was injured and then you're like, I'll go play for you? No. But Why did you hesitate? <laughs> no, there was a t something similar, not standing in to play for each other, but uh, I can't remember if it was him or I that was away mm -hmm. uh, that came back uh, to East London to visit either one of them, mm. where we went to visit one's girlfriend. Yes. I see you moving. <laughs> Your wife is here. Gossip. <laughs> yeah, but it's just a story when okay. we're still young. Yes. And then we park the car. Mm -hmm. So let's say we're coming to visit you. Mm -hmm. And Akona is your man. Mm -hmm. And then we park. <laughs> At night, you come, out the, you come out the gate. You just look between. And it's also dark. You look through the windscreen. You make a decision. But it turns out to be the wrong one. Oh, good heavens. So you come to whichever side you've decided on, and you start hugging and kissing. And then you guys <laughs> think it's funny. But you can... <laughs> <laughs> of course you didn't. Nah. So that was it. That's, that's as far as it gets. That's as far as it got. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. we realize then it's not the right thing because you can hurt people's feelings. Yeah, then you turn 14 and then it was not, in, it was not, it was not, <laughs> it wasn't fun anymore. Yes. Okay, so on a serious side, I'm, I, I look at your career, Neakona, at both yes. of you guys, and I'm not saying it was easy, but for me, it looked like you had an easier ride than the typical black player, right? In terms of, you know, the constant fight, you know, the fitting in, the transformation, yes. the getting your place, you know, with merit and not being ridiculed for being there. Yes. On the outside, it looks like you guys had an easier ride. Is it because you guys had each other or was the ride not easy at all? Um, I think it was a bit of both. Uh -huh. um, yeah, I remember, you know, I think for me, when I got to the Bulls, mm. um, Uoda came to the Bulls and played for the Bulls before I got here. Um, so in a way, he kind of made a mark, you know, mm. for himself. So I just fitted in nicely, you ah. know. But I think, you know, as you mentioned, it's, it's, it's sometimes for black players, it's tough to break, it, to break into the team. Yes. You know, but I think for us, we we're very blessed in a way that we we're able to play so many games, mm. you know, um, never mind the injuries, but in terms of, you know, we had issues with the coaches, you know, for not being selected and mm. having other players playing ahead of you. Um, but I, I don't think it was as bad as other players have experienced. Yeah. You know, we've also experienced it um, for ourselves as well, mm. you know, but I think, you know, we were very fortunate and blessed to be able to play for so long and, mm. you know, not decide to stop along the way as it happens to other players. Mm. Yeah. You see how he doesn't mention that I opened the way for him. Okay, but Galogu, now you didn't hey, thank him for opening the way for you when you guys were born. Exactly. I didn't open, I pushed. Yeah. There's a difference. <laughs> and they begged me to stay. I said, okay, I'll get you someone similar. Uh, all right. Oh, and then you found him. Yeah, I found him. Look, you've, you've actually down. got the best replacement in the world. Uh, of exactly. Course. Don't you? But he's actually gone on to be more successful than I did when I was there. Well, throughout the career, I guess. So you then are Venus Williams and then he is Serena. Oh, I Venus won't take it that far. Spot I won't take it that far. Because Venus played first and then won first, right? Yes. Remember she and won the US Serena Open first and then Serena came? Yes. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. <laughs> did you ever find it difficult to speak up, you know, you, because you, you told her, ah, don't speak up, because if you speak up, then you're not going to get selected. Was that ever a conversation the two of you had with each other? With each other or with the authorities? That'd be well, with each other, and then obviously the authorities. Yes. Yeah, I think, obviously, a lot of it stems from our background, too. Mm. You know, our background comes from where we don't challenge authority. And also being there, it's, uh, it becomes difficult, as you mentioned, mm. that, you know, once you start having a too many questions, they can easily sideline you. Because you know, the beast is big. Of course. Yeah. Of yeah. course. And and I must say, you know, we were quite fortunate, like like Akona mentioned, you know, a lot of other players have not had a longer lasting career like we did. You mm. know, so it was tough to speak up because there's not a lot of you. Yeah. Mm. You know, so mm. yeah. you you feel much stronger when there's a lot of you. You know, you can only speak so much, but if you keep getting sidelined, your voice just disappears, mm. you know, in the wind. Yes. Mm. So it is quite difficult, but it helped, as he said, having each other. Because, you know, uh, it, it wasn't easy. It was tough, you know. There were times when we used to phone e either him or me, you know, mm. telling him that, you know, this guy now doesn't want to pick me and, 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 you know, and it's tough. And obviously I think we had a very good support structure, you know, with our yes. families and our wives. It, that helped us get us through, you know, but the biggest is not obviously God blessing us with the talent and mm. protecting us throughout because it is quite a tough career. It can end at any time, you know, injury, yeah. they can finish it there. Yeah. So we were fortunate to go as long as, as we did, you know, and you also suffered two leg breaks. Sure. Mm. So for that, that is so massive. So that's happened and still come back. I still come mm. back, yeah. you know. Can you have those conversations now though? Because once again, you know, I, 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 I want to see you in the commentary space. I want to see you in the selecting space. I want to see yes. you in the coaching space. Yes. So obviously it's difficult to have those conversations about when I, you didn't pick me and you knew I deserved it, when you still want to be inside the union. Slowly, well, I, slowly we're getting there. Yeah. We've got a way. You've got a way. Yeah. Yes. He'll tell you about I, it. I think, um, you know, it's not about us now telling them that this is what you did to me. Yeah. You know, it's about looking after the 
up and coming generation. I like that. You know, so what, what, what we did was we started a player management company mm. um, where we're looking after um, up and coming black players, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, you know, trying to guide them and assist them, you know, because we understand what it takes, you know, to, 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 to go and to keep going when, you know, the coaches are not selecting mm. you, um, when everything is just not going your way. You understand the nutrition behind Yes, them. everything you that know, goes with it. keeping yourself out of trouble. And yes. the black tax. The, the, exactly, the black tax. Yes. Those are things that you're discussing with the players. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. And, and unfortunately, you know, um, it's, it's um, the guys, the authority, like you mentioned, you know, they don't, most of them don't support, yeah. you know, black players, you know. So um, we have to do something to try and break through, you know, try mm. and assist. The sponsorships. The sponsorships. Good Lord. I'm just like, how come <laughs> he's driving exactly. a Land Rover and he isn't? Exactly. Yeah, so yeah. that's what you guys are looking at as well. Yes, that is correct. All right, good luck with that. The Thank brothers you. are Eastern Cape's most remarkable black African success story. As a commentator said, how desperately the region needed these heroes to stand up as examples of what is possible with very little investment from the game's governing body and to paint a picture of how much more value the region could offer the South African game if that investment was purposeful, strategic, determined, sustainable, and ongoing. And as you heard now, both of them, this is exactly what they're looking to do. Uh, that was Akon and Odo Ndungane. But to turn things up a little bit, after the break, we meet Odo's significant other of 14 years. Stay with us. You're watching Real Talk with Anele right here on SABC3, where the stage is yours. So we heard from the rugby-playing Dungane brothers, but now it's time to hear from the woman. Odwa regards Komoto as a pillar of strength and support, comforted by knowing full well that after each game, he would be coming home to her. She runs a successful wedding planning company, Oak Celebrations, and an online clothing store for kids. Nominated in the Business Women Association South Africa Regional Awards, in the Emerging Entrepreneur of the Year category, a huge honor for the new Adventure and of course herself. Her greatest achievement is being a wife and a mom to her two children. The lady who now says she's blessed with creating a little bit of heaven on earth for her clients, fulfilling her destiny and living her passion. We welcome to Real Talk Homuto Dungane. Hi now. Hi, Adele. So here's the thing. Is it annoying yeah. that you are referred to as oh yeah, oh no, she's a rugby wife? It's not that annoying. You can actually leverage on it. So ah, <laughs> yeah. I'm always very business minded. Yeah. So anything yeah. that I can leverage on, I really don't mind it. But I mean, you know, it's 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 like having a, a really famous dad, right? When they're like, Oh, yes. you who son, you're just like, No, I have a name. <laughs> Please can you use my name? Have you yeah, ever had that yeah. moment? You're like, it's yeah, you, you, you do get that moment, but you know, like I'm saying, mm. if the opportunity can give you mm. greater opportunities that you want you yeah. embrace it but did you ever have a moment to you like because also as women we're very apologetic right mm -hmm. so when you are like no i can't i can't use his name you know i can't use this platform you know I'm yeah did actually, you ever go through that yeah actually like if you don't know who i am i'm not gonna use that platform you uh -huh. know so I actually want you to take me as I come. But later on, when you start knowing, yeah. you know, sometimes you actually even give me a different, um, you know, treatment. Do you see the change so, in treatment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always evidently humans. there. Humans. It is, yeah. But, you know, if you understand humans, yeah. you will never, and if you are mature about it, you will yeah. never take it, you know, as a... Oh, like you were treating me like this. Mm. Now you want to no, you'll just embrace it for what it is. That's a very mature way to look at it. So let's talk about, you know, the days of rugby. Mm. I mean, having a, a rugby player as a husband or a boyfriend, it's pretty much having a boyfriend who's a soldier. You just don't know if he's gonna come home in, in one piece. <laughs> Did you ever have the anxiety of will he get injured? Will he be fine? Are they gonna knock him out? Mm. Yeah, I think it's always there. Um, you know, we get to go to the games yeah. like every time they play. And um, you're always watching and you're wondering when he gets tackled, you mm. know, you always, and you know, he's sitting or like lying there. You always wonder, oh, 
is he okay? Get up, get up. You know, did he break something? And when he gets up, you mm. are really relieved. Yeah. Um, I mean, more so because, you know, when he gets injured, he's going to miss a lot of games. You know, it's his career, yeah. you know, at the end of the day. So, yeah. Are there players you don't like because they tackled him? <laughs> <laughs> no. Yes. I say that. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I think, I, think the, I think the um, All Blacks, yeah, yeah like, you know, <laughs> the, the, but he also knows, like, I really go goo goo gaga over the All Blacks, yeah. so <laughs> I probably don't even <laughs> notice when they tackle, I'm just like, oh. You weren't even watching it, they're like, hey, go, your man just got tackled, she's like, where? Yeah. I was busy looking at the hot one. <laughs> yeah, like, pretty much. Okay, and when, when it comes to the other wives and girlfriends, you know, is, is there, like, are you, were you guys on a WhatsApp group with each other, or, you know, mm. wives of, you know, this team? Uh, did did yeah. you try to have lives outside of being the rugby yeah. wives? Um, so if I may speak about the Sharks uh, family, uh. you know, yeah. So we were very well, like, you know, very closely knit. Mm. And we did have those WhatsApp groups. Mm. And... Um, we, we tried that when the guys are away overseas, we get together, we watch the games together, oh, nice. we go for dinner. So, and, 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 you know, when I went to Durban, I mean, I didn't grow didn't up in Durban. And I, yeah. So it was really that Sharks rugby team, the, the Wags, yeah, you know, yeah. that actually welcomed you and uh, showed you the ropes and like, you know, what to do. And they gave you a lot of advice. And even I remember even becoming a mom, you yeah. know, not having your mom in Durban or sisters or any family whatsoever. Having them there, it mm. helped because they already walked the journey. They had mm. their kids. So they were able to tell you, no, you know, use, like, for example, this OB, you know, oh. or like, oh, your child is sick, use this PED, like those kind of things. Like it goes a long way because you also know that they're referring you to quality yeah. people. Yeah. And I always watch the game and when the camera scans to the wags, the wives and girlfriends, you guys were always wearing like these, these shades and it's, was that like a planned thing? Like, you know, ladies, it was shades and like just extravagant, eh? Was that planned? Uh, no, not really. I think, you know, every girl loves fashion, <laughs> loves to feel good, you know, so... Um, Everyone looks really good. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, I remember the one time I went with a Sharks T-shirt and, I mean, that was the first and the last time because <laughs> no one actually wears that, right? Yeah. And you would think, oh, like... And I'm you a... thought you were being like the good wife, yeah, like, like, I am going to wear a Sharks jersey. Yeah, and everyone was so like, what are you doing? <laughs> the camera's going to be on you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Unless yeah. you're going to go into the scrum, please don't wear that again. Yeah, yeah. so that was the last time I ever wore that. And then when, I mean, you, you started your wedding planning business, right? Mm -hmm. What, because you said you saw there was a bit of a gap in the mm -hmm. market and mm -hmm. you decided to go that mm -hmm. way. Um, mm -hmm. How quickly did you start seeing a return? Yeah. So, um, a return on? As like, in, I mean, you can have a wedding planning business, yeah. but if nobody's calling you to plan oh, their wedding. Oh, yes, 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 I get you. So, I've, al I've always had an entrepreneurial spirit in mm. me. Um, so, when I was in Johannesburg, mm. I actually owned an IT company. Yeah. Um, we were getting married then with Order 2010. Um, I noticed there was a gap in Durban because that's where we were going to get married, yeah. location-wise. And uh, once I saw the gap, I had to bridge it, yeah, you know. And yeah. um, the return on investment came very quickly so because I was offering a service that was not there, uh, you know, that uh, I was really trying to bridge. So, yeah, so, yeah, so it, it, it came pretty um, quick. And I suppose if you have a sound mind of what you're doing and yeah. you think strategically yeah. and um, you know what your vision, your mission is about your company and you know your target market, you in. And you in, yeah. And and you give them quality, obviously. And then did you become the official planner of the Sharks weddings? Uh, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> Otto always used to push, and I'll be like to him, stop it. <laughs> like, let the people choose whoever. And he'll be like, no. Goes to the guys and says, my wife is planning your wedding. And I'm like, oh, Lord. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, but, you know, I, I, and then I, I, I do the most amazing job, yeah. and, and it just becomes a word of mouth, and... Yeah, now, I mean, I've probably done almost six or so. Um, yeah, yeah, of the team. Of the team. Keep it up, girl. Listen, the life of a rugby player's <laughs> wife 
has its ups and downs, as you've heard, and often includes adapting to hectic schedules. But at the end of the day, all that really matters to them is that their husband is happy. When we return from the break, Odwa and Akona join Komuta and myself. We'll wrap it up by having ourselves a good old chat. Don't go anywhere. And we're back. So listen, Odwa and Komuto met about 14 years ago when she was just a student at Tax University and he played for the Blue Bulls. Uh, according to her, she was clueless about this rugby thing. She was like, I don't know what you do, man. After seven years of dating, Odwa decided it was time to settle down. So he proposed at the one and only hotel. And as they say, the rest is history. We welcome back Odwa with his twin, Akona, and the wife is still here, Komuto. So we're having a nice chat here. So what I want to know then is... You say you didn't know anything about rugby. Yep. So <laughs> what did you think he did? <laughs> well, I actually thought he played for tax, like okay. rugby. Okay, like. which, and, and at varsity, it was a big deal to play for the tax A. Yes, okay. and, um, you know, there was a whole story previously about another guy coming to me and saying he plays rugby and for this and that. Uh-huh. And then I thought to myself when I met Odwa, Oh, no, not another guy again <laughs> with this rugby story, uh, you know? So, oh. yeah, like... <laughs> How quickly did you tell Akona about Komoto? I think it was mm. the same day I met her. Really? What did you say? This is so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did I say to who? To him? To him? I said I met someone pretty nice. Uh-huh. Right. And is that, is that it? And then what did we talk about? Yeah, I can't remember that far back. Yeah, it was... But there was something along those lines. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, at the time, I just arrived in Pretoria, and uh, we talked about other things. So I just told him that mm -hmm. I met someone quite nice, which I think I'd like to see more of her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And OK, and then when you decided you were going to marry her, because you got married first, you got married second, eh? Go Maturity, ahead. I told oh, you. Oh, we've Come discussed on. this. We've discussed yes, this. You can't yes. keep asking it again. Yes, Odwa, we yes. know. You are grandpa time. Yes. <laughs> 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 oh, we get it. We get it. OK, so then, OK, so obviously there's a process to marriage, right? Uh, do you confide in him before you ask her, like, I'm thinking of doing this. What's your advice? On him? Yes. As the older one. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him grandpa time. It's grandpa, grandpa time. He doesn't need your advice. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, I, I think I think I told uh, my parents and then I spoke to him. Mm. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think that was about it. I just told mm. him that I think it's time. Mm. You know, because obviously we'd, we'd been dating for some time and I, I kind of knew that, you know, this was the right decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when did you meet her? Yeah. Um, okay, don't worry about the I, I can't remember. Okay, no, no, clearly. Yes. Rugby yeah. knocks to the head. <laughs> 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 Memory knocks. Very dodgy. Yeah. Okay, okay, but then when you met her, did, yes. did you look like, okay, that's it, my brother's gone, this is the one for her? I did, actually. Yeah? You know, um, you know, because Odo told me about her. Yeah. And um, I think when I first met her as well, you know, I could see all of those things that he was saying to me about her. And, okay. you know, I thought, okay, I now he's sold. Okay. No turning back there. So, I mean, they are of a very, you know, staunch traditional, you know, background. Was that a bit, like, was a bit jarring to you? Just like, whoa, the lollies, really? <laughs> 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 Is there running water? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what happened was, while we were dating, um, I only knew about East London. Well, I knew that they have a house in the lollies, mm -hmm. Utata. But hey, I'd hey, never hey, been there. Mind yourself, Umtata's <laughs> not the Lali's. <laughs> the outskirts of Umtata is the Lali's. Like, it's all of the, the farms. The, the farms. farms. Yeah. Okay, yes. So, um, yeah, then I actually got to know Umtata after we got married, actually, on my, like, Utsiki and, you oh, know, the Kisa whole Utsiki, traditional. Eh? Yeah, that's when we actually went to the Was to it a shock? Umtata. It wasn't really a shock because... I mean, we'd been dating for seven years, so wow. I kind of like knew what Umtata is all about. Mm. But I mean, having said that, I'm a very like, you know, I come from a very Western kind of family, mm. um, you know? <laughs> so, um, so a lot of things, you know, you had to embrace them and mm. like really, um, yeah. Like, but it's you know, good fun. So do you see the strategy Just there? Just take. What's the strategy? 
prolong the Amtata visit. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I probably would have <laughs> ran away. Yeah. You're like, oh, oh. <laughs> get her married Until first and then show her everything. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of how yes. important was it for your brother then to not? I don't. I'm not looking for the word approve, but to gel with your wife because you got married afterwards. Yes. Um, I think it is important in a way because, you know, we, she becomes part of the family yeah. now, you know, and, um, um, you know, it's always nice when the family gets along. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, fortunately, you know, everyone got along. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it worked out perfectly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I wasn't just blowing, you know, blowing bubbles when I said you guys are the nicest, most like humble guys. So I can see that that's a, you know, you were raised properly. What do you want, what do you know that you learned from your parents that you definitely want your kids to, f to follow suit in? Adwa? I think the biggest thing is humility. Ah. Uh, humility, family, uh, I think those are the two biggest things for me. Mm. Uh, because my wife will tell you I'm big on family. You mm. know, we come from a big family. That's why I said the Eastern Cape, you know, we come from a big family and for me, that's that's the most important thing, you know, because that's all you have in life mm. is your family. And uh, one thing that rugby has taught me, you must never think you're bigger than anything because mm. life can humble you very quickly, mm. yeah. you know. So I think once you understand who you are in, in life, that's when things become easier. Mm. So that's hopefully my light is my kids are still young now. My boy is 14 months. My girl is turning six in June. Yes. So hopefully when they're bigger and can understand, that's the message that I want to give yeah. to them. And you are kind of, what's important for, you know, your kids to learn just by looking at you and not you necessarily have to tell them, do this, don't do that. Yeah. Um, I think it's uh, similar things that my brother mentioned. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, um, respect for me is important, mm. you know, um, because you, I feel that you... Respect can take you a long way, mm. you know. Um, I think, unfortunately, now most of the kids that you see, uh, you know, they don't have respect for elders. They don't mm. have respect for themselves. Yeah. You know, and I think that's why they end up doing the things that you know that takes them astray. So I think you know once you have those um, qualities, you know, in, that you you can install in your kids, you know, then at least you can know that you know they grow. They're gonna grow up to become, mm. you know, respectable human beings. Mm. And do you, um, do you and your sister wife, they have, uh, <laughs> Sianda, ne? Yes, correct. Sianda. Do you guys have a group where you guys skin up about them? You're like, oh, Sana, you will never believe. You always have to have that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, you always have to have that. Yeah, you know, it keeps you sane. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so we do. <laughs> and you guys, you guys are good. You guys have a, a good relationship yes. and you lean on each other and yes. all of that. Yeah, we have to. I mean, we the Makotis after all, hey? Exactly. So we have to have each other's back. Uh. Yeah. Okay, uh, you were speaking something about respect and being able to impart that. Yes. We've got a, a, a WhatsApp here from Amate Mtata. Oh, she wow. says, Afternoon, Anil and Dungane brothers, as well as Komoto. I'm a lady from Mtata and I'm very proud of you guys. I just got a flashback moment to South Africa when we won the World Cup and the whole team came down in 2007. It was a very proud moment for us. My question is, do you guys ever consider starting a Dungane Rugby Academy or any initiative that will develop rugby in the Eastern Cape at large? It's a very good question. Yeah. With a very good answer. And I love that name. Amale. Amale. Because that's, that's our daughter's name. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, I think if I can start, um, like I mentioned earlier on, um, the, the player management company, um, Zingisa Management. Yes. Um, and we also named it after our father. You know, my father passed on and, you know, we felt, um, you know, it's a fitting name because Legacy. of, yes, mm. and what he did for mm. us. Um, so I think, you know, with that, you know, it, it, it gives back yeah. in a way to the kids um, <gasps> that, mm. you know, we can assist and, and help grow as well, you know. Mm. Um, I think um, what also we also started is a Nungani Twins Foundation. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. And what I think is, can elaborate more on that one. <sighs> so I think, like you mentioned, we being from the Lalis mm -hmm. and to have achieved what we have achieved mm. and to, uh, to have uh, gone as far as we have. You know, because kids from uh, in those uh, situations, yeah. they don't really aspire much. 
you know, because mm -hmm. of, sec of situations and circumstances and whatever there is, you know. So I think we have a massive responsibility, uh, firstly, to just, you know, they've seen us, you know, travel this road and been, been, have been as successful as we have in our careers. Mm -hmm. So that's the, that's the experience and the knowledge that we have to pass back. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, as Akona mentioned, we have uh, this Nungane Twins Foundation, yeah. which we are planning to launch it in, uh, in June uh, uh, by having a, our second love of sport in playing golf, you know, in a golf day and launching the foundation. So basically the foundation is uh, giving opportunities uh, yeah. to the kids, you know, especially uh, we want to start it first in the Eastern Cape and then make it a national, uh, a national thing where we just give those kids uh, opportunities to a better lifestyle and, and mm. just make things better for them. And because you know, when you're there, you're not exposed to all of those, yeah. all of these benefits that other people get. Yeah. You know, so it's just our way of trying to change those kids' life, and, and hopefully, it then it can lead on to bigger things. All you right. know. Okay, so listen, we're going to take a quick ad, ad break. When we come back, we'll wrap up with that. But I just made a note here. So now golf is their second love, but earlier they used to play soccer. So soccer just, just got relegated there <laughs> in the love with the Ndugane Twins. We'll be back with the Ndugane squad after the break. Welcome back. If you've just joined us, I'm pretty sad to say, but you've missed out on a masterclass on growth, tenacity, talent, and the management of it. We've been hanging out with Odwa and Akona, the Ndungane rugby playing brothers, as well as Komoto Ndungane, who's Odwa. I was about to give you two Akona as much. Komoto Ndungane, who's Odwa's uh, wife. So for me, you know, I've, and I've watched you guys, and you've always, you know, you've kept a clear head and all of that. But surely when you're sitting and you're watching and you see other people, at this moment in time, right? You're not playing rugby anymore. Who, when you watch them, gives you rugby envy, where you're just like, oh man, I, let me find my boots, let me get on this field right now, okay? Uh, <laughs> you know, there's this youngster now that's playing for the Lions. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Apiwe Janji. Yes. Wow. Just wow. a wow. Yes. Just wow. Just a wow. <laughs> he's got something. Yeah. You know, he's a young man coming into the game, and I actually, Funny enough, you know, he played his first game against the Sharks. Yes. And he scored a beautiful try. Mm. And then I actually texted him afterwards. I said, you know what, even though it was against my team and you beat us, <laughs> but that was an amazing finish, you know. So when you say your team, will you always be a Shark supporter? It's just never going to change. Yeah, I've got the Sharks tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> really? Black and white. Okay. Pirates, Sharks, wow. everything. And he's Kaiser Chiefs, right? <gasps> All the way. Because there's a derby this weekend. Yeah, that is correct. But where are they? I uh, can't even see them. Uh, <laughs> it's 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 sundown. <laughs> <Listen, laughs> how many? There's still a couple of games left. All right. Yeah, so let's give it time. Okay, so if he likes up here at Yankee, who's your person who just makes you believe, you know? Um, I think also for me as well, it's him. Um, yeah. I think for me, I think the reason why, you know, I like the way he's playing yeah. um, is the story behind it. You know, uh -huh. I remember when um, I heard that he, you know, it, in high school he didn't play first team. You know, That's the coach, a story. yes, yeah. you know, the coaches were not backing him to, you know, but it just shows that if you don't give up, you know, and you know what you, you know, want to do in life and you just yeah. keep working, you know, then, you know, that time will come and, you know, he got the chance and grabbed it. Do you have to support the Sharks and Pirates? <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> so you being held hostage. Unfortunately, yeah. yeah. SOS. So we're always fighting mm. about sports at home, mm. watching sports all the time. If it's not golf, it's soccer mm -hmm. or rugby. And I, I mean, if you had your own choice, you wouldn't be doing any of it. No. She also, she also, she knows, she also gets a turn where she makes me watch some of the... <laughs> I don't even know the names. She will tell you what's the names. Mm. No, uh, the one I, we watched last night, what is that? I don't <laughs> even know. I just like South African stories, mm. you know, but yeah. <laughs> so you, you said something very interesting that you texted this up here, Yankee. Do you guys have each other's numbers where they, you are openly accessible 
to the younger players? I mean, this is very quickly, I want to wrap up now. We've got about 30 seconds left. Do you, do, can the younger players just SMS you and get advice then from let you? Then let answer. Yeah, I think, you know, what has been happening, you know, we on social media as well. So the guys would, you know, send us a DM on social media and then we just take it from there. You know, we exchange numbers and, mm. you know, we open for, for them to get advice from us nice. and, you know, to just try and help them because yeah. that's why we're doing this. I would have okay. gone long. Okay, yeah, there we go. You, you know this one. Yeah. We're out of time. Yeah. Akona, thank you for your time. Thank Ondo, you. thank you for your time. Thank Komoto, you. thank you very much for your time as well. Uh, remember, it is Zingisa Management, uh, Dungana Twins Foundation. Uh, those are the two projects that they're currently working on and they're launching it in June, so make sure you're looking out for it. Tomorrow we talk about brand reputation management, uh, a very big topic currently in this country. Right now, though, we're out of here. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Isidingo's up next. Don't miss it. For myself and the team, good night. Thank you.